We should be. All right, let's let's get this going. Good evening, gamers, and welcome to our fantastic feature premiere show of Breaking Battlefield, which uh, has been full of uh, full of technical difficulties tonight, and uh, I do apologise for that. Uh, my PC has uh, absolutely crapped itself in the hour of need, and uh, I'm currently on my iPhone and uh, my iPad whilst I'm looking at my computer spread across the floor of my room. So um, Shannon has had to take over the streaming at the last minute and uh, we do apologise for everything that's going wrong. Um, I have been reading the Twitch chat though and I do like all the uh, the comments. Yes, we're only over 25% uh, sponsorship as you can see on the video there. So that's going on. But look, my name is Deluxe. We'll, we will get the ball rolling uh, on the show regardless of uh, all the difficulties. I do really apologise again for that. But that uh, doesn't mean we can't get through everything we had had lined up tonight. Yes, that was my door closing. So yeah, well, look, I basically, first off, I'll introduce uh, all my co-casters for this evening. Um, tonight, uh, from the X5 team, we've got Shannon, um, we've got Floor, we've got uh, Viper Oz hiding down there as well, and Dr. Steve, uh, who's also joined us for tonight, which is fantastic. Um, how are you guys going? Good, man. Good, buddy. Good. Looking forward to it. Dusting, awesome. off, the, dusting off the cobwebs, mate. Getting back into the swing of it. Excited for things to come, mate. That's what I like to hear. So let's, uh, <laughs> at least we've got some excitement in the studio. I'm not sitting here in my, my tears of my broken computer. But uh, no, look, yeah, we've got the rest of the X5 Live team hanging around. We've got Cookie and all that uh, hanging around the studio as well, which is great. And um, and whilst we're here, we've got Meadow down here as well. A massive shout out to Meadow. He's uh, he's the one who put together that uh, that video that we launched the the channel with, uh, which was fantastic. And uh, I was really impressed with how epic it was at the end. So that was really great. But look, first off, I'll just give a bit of a brief introduction on what on what we're actually going to do at X Five Live when we stop breaking things and uh, everything's rolling, which will hopefully be very soon. But uh, like what we we're hoping to achieve with the Battlefield community is. You know, this is very early stages of this project. You know, we've got a lot of great ideas and, and things we can do, but um, you know, we've only got a really small team at the moment. The majority of whom play for a pro battlefield team, so you know, things are going to be a little bit slow to begin with. Um, however, we plan to to do shoutcasting of BF4 in all the competitive leagues here in Australia. So that means all the cyber gamer leagues, including the five thousand dollar M Wave competition. Um, this is really exciting as, you know, it's the first time in over four years that we'd be able to, to shoutcast and stream live competitive Battlefield. You know, we haven't been able to do it since the, the days of Netgame Radio and Gamester on, on Battlefield 2. And, and then since then with, with BC2 and BF3, you know, we, we just had no, you know, no ability to do, to do so. But with BF4, we've finally got spectator mode and, and you know, we're going to be able to get into it again. So it's really exciting. You know, I'm really hoping this is going to get more people involved in the scene as well as, you know, keep the hype of the game up for a long period of time. You know, all those old school gamers out there will just know how great it was back in the day to listen to your own matches and, you know, and Viper Oz, you know, calling some great play that you've made, you know, uh, and, and listening to it. It was just pure entertainment. And, um, you know, back then that was just radio and now we've got streaming. So, you know, it just adds so many dimensions to it. And we're really excited to just, you know, to, to use that and, um, you know, create, create this, um, this great coverage. So, Look, uh, on top of the team I introduced before, uh, we're going to recruit some more old school casters, which, um, you know, may be named sh shortly. Uh, also some new casters. Um, you know, this is most likely we'll do that from, from getting some guest casters to do match, matches from time to time. I know a couple of the guys I've spoken to about this already have put their hands up. Darkness from, um, from Avant Guards already offered his, uh, his services, which is great. So, you know, and if things work out, then, you know, We'd love for people to come on board the um, the X5 Live team, and, and we'll get a lot more shoutcasters and get a lot more casts happening, and make make sure we get all the games covered because that's that's ultimately our goal. So, look, we're also really keen to do an Inside Battlefield style show, um, which is breaking Battlefield, which is what we're attempting to do tonight with minor technical difficulties. But you know, we'll do that again on a, on a weekly or a fortnightly basis. So. You know, not an immediate thing, but definitely happening by the end of the year when the competition starts um, getting underway, um, all the teams get gets sorted and then all that sort of stuff. So, you know, on top of all that, you know, our awesome sponsors, NVIDIA, CM Storm, CM have given us the opportunity to give away some of their gear um, on, the, on the stream as well through competitions and that. So, you know, 
all that sort of stuff is 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 going to be really cool as well. And you know, we'll do do team interviews and all that sort of stuff for the grand final. So if you want to keep up to date with all of that and and keep up the progress, you know, I I, I assume I, you know, I assure you it can only go up from here. So. <laughs> Um, you know, keep up to date with what we're doing because this is going to be really great, uh, really cool for the community. And you can follow us on Facebook, um, facebook.com slash Teams Exile 5, youtube.com slash Team Exile 5, twitch.tv slash X5 Live, and our website, team xl 5org And, um, you know, hopefully we'll be um, shoutcasting all you guys really, really, really soon. So, look, oh, finally, all right, now we've done all that, we can uh, get moving into the show. So, um, Basically, we're just going to have a bit of a chat with all the, um, you know, the top teams um, in the battlefield scene, a uh, captain from each of the teams, just about questions about their team and all that sort of stuff. Going to have a quick chat about the future of um, Battlefield and Cybergamer, a bit of a discussion about the BF4 beta, and we've also got an interview with uh, Chris XPL from MWave on the $5,000 MWave competition. So a lot of things to get through, and uh, hopefully we won't run too late with all with all those delays but i'll introduce the panel that we've got in here tonight uh, we've got uh, waffles from team salentium death dog from team immunity we've got crack from legionnaires buttersoft from avant-garde mon peep from the online gaming addicts we've got sonic from crux crew we've got floor massacre representing uh, team xl5 and we've also got uh, talnoy lurking around these corridors somewhere so hopefully we'll get him uh, to have a bit of a chat with us as well, which is great. So look, I'll, I'll kick it off with um, with the newest team on the block, which is um, Team Salentium's uh, Team Salentium and, and Waffles. How are you going, Waffles? I'm pretty good. How are you? Despite the tears, I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, what's been happening? Uh, what's been happening with you, man? Um, outside outside of Battlefield, you know, give us a bit of a uh, bit of an insight into Waffles. Anything you didn't uh, give away on the interview with Spot the Aussie during the week? Uh, well, in my personal life, I've been I was working. A fair bit during my time in IM. Um, uh, just recently, I went to full time student, so that's uh, made got me a lot of time to do other stuff and run a team for Battlefield. Awesome. So, uh, look, Team Slentium. First of all, where where'd the name come from, man? Um, I believe it came from Akuma, who, after several terrible names, hit upon a bit of gold. And yeah, just a random going through Greek names and random other stuff that sounded cool and just sort of stuck. Awesome. Okay. So, look, I mean, you're a pretty, you know, a very reputable player in the community and I'm sure you'd be a pretty welcome addition to, to many good team lineups. You know, what inspired you to, to make your own team instead of, of joining an established team? Um, I think it was just sort of maybe a factor of just having been there, done that sort of thing. Like, I've played for teams that have been near the top all the time. I've captained a few... And I just enjoyed trying to help new players or bring people up to the same level and just add more competition to the community. Yeah, that's great. No, I really love the idea of, you know, I love new teams popping up because, you know, if, uh, if all the good players sort of enter the, the top three teams and, you know, nothing, nothing, nobody else comes through. So it's a really great initiative that you're doing and um, really look forward to seeing you guys. So um, you know, what sort of problems do you think you'll face at the beginning? You know, how long do you think it'll take for you guys to get up to the scratch with, with the front runners? Um, I'm not exactly sure how long it'll take. It'll depend on a lot of things that I haven't seen yet. I think the initial problems we'll have is new players that might be expecting too much from a new team not meeting those expectations. Like, you know, obviously not going to beat like, teams like IM or Avant on the first week. And sometimes people just over-expect too much and that's where issues start. So as long as we keep, and keep our egos in check to a degree, I think we'll be alright. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Now, well, um, who, uh, you know, you, your lineup. I've had a look, quick squiz through that during the week. You know, you've got some really old school names in there, which is really cool, back from the BF2 days, and, and then even further for some of them. You know, we've got Smiths and yeah. Kilpatrick and Akuma and all those guys. You know, who, who do you reckon we're going to be looking out for in the team? You know, who do you reckon is going to be the, 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 the shiner of the, you know? Um, I think, obviously, Kilpatrick and that, when they're active, are insanely good players. Um, Smiths, if he keeps on playing the way he's playing, he's going to be a really good tanker as well. But I think... Um, out of the new players I've seen, I could definitely think Effort and Snow Cones are going to be really good players in the future. Awesome. All right. Who, uh, what's your top three prediction for BF4 in the, in the very first competition? BF4, I've obviously got to put IM and Avant in the first top two positions. And for third, that's, that's a tough one for third, because I think anyone that's playing enough can probably take that out of everyone here. I'd have to say, at a guess, probably X5, just because they're such an old team and they've got so much experience 
compared to everyone else. Cool. And uh, who is your prediction for the underdog that's not in this team speak? So which which other team out there besides the guys in, in, in here do you think uh, could surprise us all? Probably Silo if they play properly because I've seen them cross to games like COD4 and that and they were like one of the top teams in COD4 crossing over. Like they've got, definitely got the talent there to just pick up a game and be amazing at it. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Waffles. Uh, we'll move no right along to... Uh, to Death Dog from Team Immunity. Mate, how you been doing? What's uh, What have you guys been doing outside of Battlefield? Uh, not too bad, mate. Um, I've just been playing Counter-Strike. The other guys have been pretty much inactive, um, playing assorted random games. Awesome, fair enough. Um, looking at your lineup, you know, a uh, few slight adjustments, but relatively the same as, as BF3. Do you think that'll help? Um, you know, the, your course, you know, for the start of BF4? Uh, we lost Dan to inactivity. He's stepped down um, as our tanker. So we've got Thrask now, which is um, an upgrade, depending on how you look at it. They're very different players, but we'll see how we go in Battlefield 4. We have a lot of faith in Thrask and what he can do, so I'm pretty excited in that sense. Um, but our main addition has been an air crew, which we feel like we can lean on a little bit in 8v8. So that's a huge difference for us um, from Battlefield 3. But we really didn't have any kind of air crew or anything like that. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, a lot of your campaign in the in the Team Australia ordeal was, you know, you got to the air maps and we sort of you sort of went, oh, fuck it, let's just, uh, you know, let's just play on the ground, and it was really successful for you. But um, you know, it's definitely, you know, going to be a really good good thing to to have a, a permanent chopper crew. You know, do you think they'll, you know, Trippin's obviously got a really great reputation. Do you reckon they'll be able to take it to um, to the other teams in Australia in, and the international team? I definitely think um, as far as Australian teams go, they're contenders for the top position as far as air crews go, I mean, as well. Um, but international teams, it's going to be trial by fire, and we all know that, so we just need to wait and see. Um, I can't really make a prediction. I don't want to embarrass myself by doing that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I mean, And obviously you'll be looking to, you know, to get on top of BF4 right from the start and, and earn your right as, as Team Australia again. Um, definitely. We're just looking to put in as many hours as we can. A lot of us work now, which is a difference um, from Battlefield 3, because a lot of us were studying back then, but our time has been a little bit reduced uh, by that, but we're going to try to make practice effective and um, make the most of everything and just put in as many hours as we can and see what happens. Awesome. All right. Who's your, uh, who's your top three for Battlefield 4? Top three... Um, would be us, uh, XL5, and Avant Garden. All right. And, and the underdog? Underdog. Uh, I'd likely go with Scylla again, or I think there's a team called VT, the one that has, um, they have a great air crew and they play a lot of Conquest. So. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks Desta. We'll, uh, we'll move right along. Head over to, uh, to Crack from Legionnaires. Mate, how are you going? Mate, good. Awesome. Uh, what what have you guys been up to whilst you um you know in the loo of, of BF three? Um, not too much, mate. I, as soon as we were finished with Battlefield three, just sent everyone off for a break and did their own things, and um, everyone's finally starting to come back in dribs and drabs. So, um, yeah, everyone's starting to get back and excited for it. So, uh, hopefully, we can all stick together and play hard. I guess. Yeah, awesome. Now, you and I have had a bit of a chat in the last couple of nights about how your team's actually going to be tackling it a little bit slightly differently um, to the rest of the teams in there, in that you're, you're going to have some players dedicating themselves to the smaller format of the fives, I would assume, and, yeah. um, and also a, yeah, yeah. a team dedicating themselves to the main format. Do you think that'll you know, be an advantage against the other teams who split themselves across both formats? Um. It can be and it can't be. Like it, the guys that have split themselves and want to do the um, squad rush only, like that's our main infantry guys gone. Um, but we've got a lot of new guys that have come in that can still play infantry pretty well. It's just um, uh, trying to, if there is an invite cup or whatever first comes out, I'm going to hopefully try and convince those guys that only want to play squad rush to come back. Got a lot of work to do to convince them yet. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, fair enough, fair enough. Um, all right. I have to ask you a little bit of a political question because, you know, everyone loves mm -hmm. to, to stir shit. Um, 
what happened with the VART and, uh, and why the move back to Legionnaires? Um, LG's always been home to us. We've, that's where, well, that's where I started. Me and Misha made it, and you know, it's just we wanted to try out the orgs and do everything by ourselves and see how it all went. And in the end, it just it wasn't us. You know, just we didn't like it. We we always said we were going to come back to Legionnaires in the end, and you know, we just it just ended up coming back, and it it just feels like home. You know, so. Oh, that's that's definitely fair enough. And um, is it true that Misha mm-hmm. buys all you guys' computers? <laughs> Buy his house if we're really nice to him. Well, he built me a new computer because um, mine's he broken. Has, he has been talking. <laughs> you can ask him if you want, man. I'm sure he'll set you up with something. <laughs> but no, he, um, he's been really good. Yeah, he's uh, doing a lot of design work and getting mouse pads and stuff out for everybody. And... Um, I don't really know who he's given stuff out to, but um, I guess if you really need something, then all you got to do is ask. You can only get yes or no. And that's permission to everybody listening into the stream. If you need any new computer gear, <laughs> um, hit up Mission from LG. I'm sure he'll be able to, to pass it out a little bit. <laughs> awesome. All right, top three, BF4. Uh, I'm going to have to go Team Immunity number one again, as, and then maybe X5 and... Like I said, I'm not really sure for third. It could could be anyone. Depends on who puts in the most effort, I guess, and who wants to be there. But um, maybe avant-garde. Fair enough. And uh, and the underdog, who who's uh, who's going to be barking up the tree? Um, I'm going to maybe say Infinity Gaming. If if they play like they did in the last couple seasons of Battlefield Three, if they can keep that up. So, yeah, Infinity cool. Gaming. Awesome. All right, thanks for that, mate. Well, let's, uh, we'll move right along on to Avant Guard. We've got uh, Buttersoft here from Avant Guard here tonight. Hey, hey. How you doing, mate? Yeah, good. You? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, look, what have you guys been up to um, since uh, BF3? Oh, cool. since BF3. We've taken a break. The boys are playing a bit of pub and stuff. We're all just, just, we've got a heavy schedule coming up. Um, we're going to be working really hard in the first couple of weeks, so we've, I think we've just been letting off steam. Free copies of Civ, a bit of Dota, you know how it goes. Awesome. Um, sweet. So I might, uh, I might be a little bit wrong in saying this, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it seems like for BF4 you're, you're going to be taking, stepping up into a bit of a leadership role where you haven't really been in the past. Um, how, how are you finding that anyway? Look, I'm, I'm mostly admin. I'm there to, to help make things run smoothly. Again, I won't be sort of making calls in battle a whole lot. Um, I'll probably be on the bench a fair bit at the start. But as I said, that heavy schedule means that we're going to need, you know, as many people as we've got on the bench. We've got a lineup of sort of 14, 15 people, including the air crew. And we'll probably be chewing through that just to make sure we're always fielding a team and to keep everybody match fit. Yeah, definitely. You know, you, you look at uh, professional sports teams out there, they've got a, a substantial bench on them and they rotate that through. So, so why, why not for, um, you know, for esports and that? So, definitely. Um, what about, um, I, I found out during the week that you might be advanced chopper or, or little bird pilot. Um, how, how did you find them in the air compared to um, BF3? I'll open this up a little bit to everybody a little bit later. I just wanted to ask your opinion since you are actually a, a bit of a chopper pilot. <laughs> The the attack helis were were interesting. It was it was so such a grind actually having to kill another attack heli. Um, they've got they've got potential though as they get more unlocks and stuff, be able to hurt things, hurt each other a bit more effectively. I took to ramming as I said before we started the stream in order to take enemy choppers down. It was just a more effective tool half the time. Um, the little birds. I didn't re- even realize there was one in the beta. I didn't play the the demolition mode or whatever it was, and apparently there was a little bird in that. So, I've heard they've upped the engine power and stuff, made it more maneuverable, and they've got rocket pods. If you watch some of the other little demo videos that are out there, um, I don't know if those are in the beta or not. But um, in before they nerf the engine power and the guns two weeks after the game's released, same as they did for BF3. <laughs> yeah, probably. I just, I just really want the BF2 chopper back. That was, uh, that was perfect in my eyes. But there you go. Um, all right. Well, um, avant garde. The lineup um, has changed quite a little bit, or quite a bit actually, um, since BF3. Do you think you'll be able to get back on the top quickly again? 
I think we will. I've personally worked with a lot of players in that lineup, either as part of the the previous Vanguard lineup. And there's not not anybody from Carnage left, really. I must admit, we do have a couple of guys in the background, but um, the guys we've picked up new are uh, good, the best of the best. You know, I I wanted to pick up a few of the players. Um, Gogo ended up picking up. You know, I would have picked him up ahead of some of the guys we've got, but I can't say I'm not happy with the lineup. You know, there's people like Pato in there. Squish is just a rock. Valzo, you know, Brains can do everything Mefit can do, but he's quicker, so it's fantastic. We've got a great lineup. We're looking forward to getting into it. Sweet. All right. Um, top three, PF4. Us and I am. We will be trying to knock them off their podium. You can bet. You know, that's what we're striving toward. Number three, I love X5, but I'm going to pick OGA. OGA with Fulio. I've seen those guys work hard there. Mon, Mon Pepe's a goddamn thinker, you know what I mean? They'll surprise teams in, in match games again and again, so I'm picking OGA third. All right, fair enough, mixing it up. i got nothing against him. Till later. All right, <laughs> sweet, mate, thanks for that. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to OGA um, on that note. And uh, the first question I've got to say is, it, is it Mon Pepe or is it Mon Pepe? Because I swear to God I've heard about a million different pronunciations. It's uh, Mon Pepe. Mon Pepe, okay. As in Mon Pepe or Mon Pepe? Uh, Mon Pepe is actually uh, how it's said, yeah. Mon Pepe, okay. All right, we'll roll with that. <laughs> uh, look, it's good to see, um, good to see you, mate. Good to see OGA coming back into the fray again. <clears throat> um, what's been happening with you guys in the interim? We've been um, having a break and just chilling out. Guys have been playing different sorts of games like uh, Dota and. Um, you know, other random games, but yeah, just having a, a break from FPS for a while. Sweet. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen you guys playing quite a bit of Dota 2, so I was surprised to not see you enter the Dota 2 league instead of the BF4 league. <laughs> yeah, no, not that good. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, let's, let's talk about your lineup. Um, who's back? Who's gone? Um, well, for a bit of Battlefield 3 team, it was a pretty new team. We had um, some guys come across from XL5. So sort of Battlefield 3, we used that to sort of gel, but um, there's a couple of new names in there and a couple of people that have stepped up. Um, those of you that know Team um, Infinity, we've picked up two of their infantry players that you would have seen in their 4v4 team. Um, and we've also um, Killer Smurf, who's a tanker who's really put in a lot of effort and he's stepped up to be our second tanker under Cripple. And Tendara, who's coming in as a, a chopper pilot coming across from Tendara Gaming. Um, but most of the other names there are from our Battlefield 3 team that people would recognise, but we've just got to round it out with a couple more infantry players and vehicle players to sort of um, solidify things. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's really good. I mean, it's really great that you're diverse, you know, divide, diversifying the team a little bit. You know, it's, it's always good to get a bit of experience from other teams. And, you know, uh, you've, you've been, um, you know, captaining a side since Battlefield Vietnam, you know, so you, you know exactly what it's like, and, and that's really great. So... Um, it's good to see uh, Cripple back in the fray as well and Fulio and all that, you know, the old school awesome players, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, obviously, it was pretty sad to see you guys exit BF3 sort of halfway through CGI due to not having enough numbers. Um, do you think the same thing will happen to OGA and BF4? You know, what, what could you do better to keep the competitive scene in, in New Zealand alive? Uh, I think for us, we sort of left because when the, that latest patch came in that brought in the suppression, and we just didn't really enjoy the game. Um, so we sort of decided to make a, a decision to stop playing. But uh, what we've seen so far in Battlefield 4, um, really, we really like and it suits our style of play. Um, particularly with the map design as well, they're a lot more open. Um, um, so we're looking forward to actually getting into it and giving it a, a more of a shove than we did in Battlefield 3. Fantastic, that's what, that's what we like to hear. Um, will you guys be attending all the you know the big NZ lands again? You know because you know, every year we see we see you guys we see you absolutely dominating all the New, New Zealand lands over there. You know are we going to see that continue for BF4? Uh, yeah, we've got a land in November coming up in Wellington, and we're sending ten of us down to that. So um, everyone's looking forward to catching up and having a few beers and playing a few games. Oh, fantastic! That that's really great that you guys are able to bond like that and uh, continue those lands together as a team. That's that's fantastic. All right, um, top three, BF4. Uh, I'd say, obviously, I am at the top because they uh, tend to always be there. But uh, the, the bottom two, uh, I'd say probably advance, and we'll give it a nudge to try and get in the top three this time. We'll put in a, a bit of effort. 
Awesome. And uh, and the underdog? I'm not really sure. I, I, the um, S, I'm not sure. Um, don't really know any of the other teams because we've been out of the ladder for such a long time and all the teams in the in the channel now are a very good team, so I, I couldn't really pick an underdog out of someone who's not here because I don't know any of them. All right, fair enough. We'll let you slide on that one then. <laughs> all right, thanks, mate. We'll, uh, we'll get uh, moving on to Crux Crew. We've got Sonic from Crux Crew. Um, apart from getting stomped at uh, CSGO, mate, what's been happening? Oh, you know, not a lot. Just, uh, as you said, just getting smashed in CSGO. That's, that's about it, as far as that goes. Yeah, you are pretty bad at it, so that's you know it's good that you come back to, it. to BF4. No, no worries, man. That's good. <laughs> now, look, uh, Crux made a really interesting entry into BF3. You know, um, you guys sort of came from from nowhere. You came from CS backgrounds and all sorts of weird stuff. Um, you know, you were massive underdogs, and you proved to be a really awesome battlefield team. Um, can we expect the same for BF4 coming in um, hot? Um, well, yeah, I uh, I definitely believe we'll be um, we'll be putting in a lot of effort in the early uh, early weeks. To eventually um, push again into the top five, and hopefully we'll um, push well into the top five, and hopefully maybe even a uh, third, fourth, or you know around that area. But um, we um, most of us, as you said, we're um, pretty much uh, pub brands, I guess you could say, and we all just got together, strutted hard, and um, eventually got to where we wanted to be. Uh, try to go further, but you know the competition died off. Hopefully we can do it again. For sure. No, it'd be really good to see you guys uh, hit it up again. So, now look, part of your fame uh, can be attributed to what we at XL5 like to call Ooh. the Crux Zerg. Yes. Where'd that come from? Is it planned? You know, do, do, you, do you guys, do you call like hold spawns? Uh, for those of you who have, haven't played a lot against Crux, they, they play sort of how the Chinese play their Dota. Uh, they have an incredible ability to just spawn eight guys in and defend a flag or, or, or push, you know, one guy who survives turning into eight over the space of five seconds and just and just crushing and moving around the map really well. So that's sort of what they've been known for. But, um, you know, does, does your team Synergy just allow that to happen or is it called? You know, what, what sort of goes on there? Um, I, I would probably say 50-50. Um, sometimes it's called, but a lot of the time we are just, you know, all... Uh, it just occurs. It's uh, it's nice. Just a uh, all spawn bomb on one point, and you know, keep the enemies off it, and then we get back in a position. <laughs> Excellent. It's a pain in the ass to play against. So I'm sure we'll be able to see a lot more of it in BF4. Um, all right. Uh, in terms of your lineup, pretty similar to BF3. Got the addition of a new tanker. How's um, how's Anaconda fit into the team? Sorry, what was that? How's Anaconda fit into the team? Oh yeah, he's um he's a top bloke, so in test, you know, we all get uh get along with him really well. Um, and he's a solid tanker, as you guys probably know, he was in sequential in the very early days. So um, hopefully we can definitely see uh him doing well in the Battlefield Four tanks, even though they're a little bit different. He was saying that he prefers them, so hopefully we can see him crushing uh crushing some noobs. Uh, no, that'd be good to see. It's always good to see more sort of specialists um, enter the game and, and be really, really good. So, looking forward to that. Um, is your lineup final? Are you looking for a few more specialists? Because uh, now's a very good time to shout out to the community what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, we, I'm, I want to pick up uh, probably one more infantry player. You know, depending on um, whether. A couple of the boys get back into it, like uh, Electric and Zed. We haven't seen much of him recently, but um, everyone said they they're keen to get back into it. So I reckon we'll just um pick up one more. You know, if it's ten v ten, that'll fit in very nicely. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get one more infantry. Um, and yeah, that that'll probably be it for us. Sweet. All right, top three for BF4. Oh, um, Tim and Muni, Avant, and uh, oh, the tricky one, number three. I'll have to go with uh, OGA. OGA, all right, fair enough. And the underdog? Um, I'm not sure how they're going to go, or if they're continuing the Battlefield Four without uh, Uncle Rory. But Infinity Gaming, I reckon, will be another top contender. Um, if DNS Flushing's still in, I'm sure EOTL will do all right too. Fair enough. All right, thanks, mate. 
Um, and then last but not least, we'll move on to uh, to my team, Team XL5. And uh, we've got, uh, representing X5 tonight, we've got Floor Massacre, who's uh, my old mate. Mate, it's been a long time. feel like I haven't spoken to you in, uh, you know, like 20 minutes or something. But uh, look, how, you, how have you been going in the interim of BF4? What, um, what have you been up to? What's, what's the rest of the team been up to? All that sort of stuff. Hey, buddy. How are you going? I'm um, great, mate. <laughs> uh, look, man, the boys haven't been doing much. Uh, we've just been kind of relaxing before release. Um, like a lot of the guys play, you know, like Dota 2 and a um, bit of CS on the side. Um, and just, you know, general, generally talking about, you know, Battlefield 4, like the new game modes and the formats and new teams, new players, etc. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, well, let's, let's talk about um, our lineup. Um, we've, we've obviously decided to go with a, with a pretty big lineup. Uh, we've got a lot of the old... Battlefield 3 players coming back into the fray. You know, we've got uh, Frenzy, Meadow, Crouch, Crazy. Uh, and we've also got some new additions like um, Phenom and, and some of the ex-Ascension guys. Um, you know, what, uh, in your opinion, what's, you know, what's happening with the team? How, how is it all going to play out with, with the new lineup? Yeah, man, we have, a, we have actually like a, a, a huge lineup. And it is kind of a little bit of a problem, but it was also good at the same time. Um, Frenzy and Med coming back into the squad. Um, they're part of our assault squad. Um, we've got Couchy in the air, um, in the chopper. We've got Crazy on the ground in the tank. They're our specialist players. And then we've got Fen, who's like a utility player, like a universal player. And then we've got a couple of the uh, Ascension boys who are all solid inf players and uh, good guys. But um, we kind of knew that, like, okay, we've got all these... 10,000 guys in our team, what are we going to do sort of thing? We can't cherry pick eight guys and get rid of like the other 20. So we're deciding to probably go in with multiple teams like in um, in all formats like Conquest and, uh, you know, the smaller formats and stuff. Yeah, no, and that is, that is the plan, I guess, for the team. Yeah, so doing a little bit differently to how we've done it in the past, but, um, yeah, we'll see how it all goes. Um, so look, we had a pretty rigorous um, pre BF four warm up, I suppose, in, in BF three. Um, you know, you 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 organised a lot of that. Um, you know, why why was that? Do you think? Do you think it'll help the inception of the new the new team into BF four? Well, pretty much like B Battlefield three, uh, we had a certain lineup, and then come Battlefield four, we have a new lineup once again. So the problem is, we wanted essentially to test out these players to see how they rolled just to see like what type of play styles they had to offer um so we kind of really wanted to go into battlefield 4 to have like a good understanding on like you know where these type of players were like most effective yeah for sure all right and um what's uh, what's your pick what's your top three <sighs> top three man is too tough way too tough it's brilliant and i love it Look, I'm probably going to have to go with I am. Um, you know, solid all rounder team, good inf, good good tankers, and and solid air. Um, not far behind them, I think is going to be OGA, and not far behind them, it's going to be Avant. But it's I, I, it's really hard to pick. You know, first, second, third. It's really going to be tough. Yeah, no, I agree. It's uh, I, I think the top. You know, like we've got seven teams in here tonight, all of who I think could be top three contenders with, with just with their past success in BF3. So it's, um, yeah, it's bloody hard to pick. And like you said, that's great. That's, uh, that's really exciting. So, all right. And uh, you pick for the underdog? Look, man, there's not just one, not one underdog. There's multiple underdogs. I'm talking multiple. Well, I've got a list here. I've got Infinity Gaming. I've got Team Imperfect. I've got Nullify. I've got Salad. I've got Elephants on the Loose, Scylla, Threat Gaming. And Sons of Valor. Don't know who's going to be the underdog, man. They're all good. If they put in the effort, they put in the time, they can be part of the invite league. Yeah, and that's just it. You know, like the, you're right. You know, all those teams uh, have, have played quite a bit of BF3 and, and got to a pretty decent level. And if they <clears throat> continue putting the effort into BF4, there's no reason why they couldn't, couldn't get up there. So, no, I definitely yep. agree with you. Yep. All right, awesome. Thanks for that, mate. Yeah, no worries. Uh, just, sorry, mate, just to stop you there. Um, quick shout out to 
my old mate uh, Savage from Avant, one of the last remaining Battlefield 1942 players from Team Lex Talonis. Also, another shout out to EP. Enough said. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you're getting old. No, you're definitely getting old. All right, we uh, we were going to have a little bit of a chat with um, with Talnoy at this stage of the show, but I think he might have uh, ducked off. Has anybody has anybody seen him around? Okay, him? Two channels. I would drag him down yeah, with a little chat him. with Talnoy. Insufficient permissions. We were going to have a little bit of a chat with him about um, about Cyber Gamer and um, okay, Battlefield relationship. And um, oh, here he is now, Talnoy. How you doing, mate? Hey, how you going? Good, good, good. I thought you'd get Watch me down out, here. Sorry. No, I got the whole echo effect going. No, you're right. No, I thought we'd have just a little hey, bit, whilst you were around, uh, hey, have a bit of a chat with you about um, about CG and, and BF4 and how that's all going. You've, you've sort of been at the forefront of, um, you know, Battlefield for a long time. But for those of you who don't know Talnoy, pretty much everybody should. But, um, you know, he's basically been in a Battlefield franchise since uh, he can remember basically, he's, he's a little bit old, but uh, it is his home. Um, he played uh, BF2 competitively with a few teams a long time ago. He was known as 3FSJ Talnoy uh, a long time ago. And uh, at the end of it, not many people may know he was actually known as OGA Talnoy and uh, worked alongside Mon Pippi in, um, in BF2. So, and Luda. And Luda, yeah, no, you can't, you can't forget Luda. Uh, he's currently one of the head admins over at Cybergamer and uh, actively oversees everything that's going on with the Battlefield community and uh, loves watching the community petty, you know, squabble over petty crap whilst he rakes in the advertising money. So that's Talnoy for you. But um, well, did you get your hands on the beta at all, Tal? What did you think of it? Yeah, I played the beta pretty much from the minute it came out until it finished. Um, Conquest wasn't too bad. I think it's definitely better than Battlefield 3 was. Um, and I really liked Domination, to be honest. I loved it. I played it for four or five hours at a time. A Domination fan? You've got to be probably not, pretty much the first person that I've spoken to that's enjoyed it. But no, uh, that's good. I think that airburst shotgun was killing it for everyone in the end, but to start with, it was pretty good. <laughs> so why did, why, why did you enjoy it? Because you must literally be the only person that I've spoken to that has enjoyed it. Uh, what, what, uh, what made it stand out for you? I think uh, I played Battlefield for a long time and I've played a lot of games since, like Counter Strike and even a Go Call of Duty and a lot of other games. And I think it's that kind of. Uh, it reminds me of Capture the Flag in TF2 and it's just, yeah, it's just something I really enjoy. It's just that type of faster paced game mode. That's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, You've been right, playing well, seriously, of course. Yeah. <laughs> that does change things a little bit. No, look, it's, it's great that you're teaming up with, um, with M Wave for the initial competition, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to have a little bit of chat with Chris later on about that. He's going to fill us in on all the details. But um, look, what else can we expect from Cybergamer in the future? I've, I've heard a few exciting things from you, so I'd like for you to share them around. Well, they were confidential, Sam, so thanks for putting it out there. No, right. um, no just kidding. Uh, well, as some people do know, we run the Cybergamer Premier League, and you know, um, my good friend Zinto is sitting there saying he's turning Battlefield into a sport, which doesn't carry much weight but um you know it all depends on what kind of game modes are viable because we've got this so-called diffuse mode which is obviously clone of cod 4 or counter strike um i'm guessing that's what they're going to try and target it at but it's more about the fact that um you know for teams who want to attend to land or if we want to run cgpl it's pointless for us to run that and have an 8v8 team format qualify eight teams and have two teams go because they've got enough money to get there so a lot of it depends on um, how the game pans out once it's out for a bit longer and, you know, everyone's settled with what they want to play and with that, what they do want to play is going to be something you know, competitive that we can look at doing, you know, some live events for. Yeah, definitely. And that, that, that's really exciting for us because, you know, as a Battlefield community, just a bit let down, I guess, by BC2 and BF3 and, that you know, it wasn't supported in LAN. It didn't have a spectator mode and we couldn't really turn it into a bit of a sport, which is what we love to do with BF2. So now with the opportunity in BF4, it's great that you're looking to, to support it. So, you know, and, and you know, it's, we as a community look to make 8v8 our main league or 10v10, that, that, that medium style format. Um, you know, the Europeans tend to go the smaller format. The Americans, I've heard from somebody recently that they're actually going to go for an 8v8 style, style format on release. Um, you know, being Australians and, and supporting AVA, do you think do you think that would be able to still work in a LAN event? Do you think we'd still be able to have you know online qualifiers and have a LAN event with 
you know, four, eight teams on well, eight. Yeah, look, it, it's it's a 50-50. It really is because, like I said, it, it's likely to come down to, say, XL5 and Team Immunity, maybe Avant, if they can get out of their gaming house, um, being able to actually afford to come down. So you're left with eight qualified teams and only three that can attend. That may not be the case, but um, another one of the issues with playing AP8 is if you've got, say, 64, 64 players there and you've got eight teams, um, the cost of having the equipment there uh, that's powerful enough to run Battlefield 4 and having it in enough numbers that you're not playing for two days just to, you know, to play three matches each, um, that kind of comes into it as well. It is very expensive to run because the amount of computers you've got to have running in the spec they need to be. It, it, that's what it all comes down to. It's, it's really... Um, I think Battlefield has a place, especially in the ABA level, probably more to BYOC, where the people that can get down would all then go to it and organising something through that. But um, a large scale LAN or like a um, national championship style event like CGPL, I, I'd really question it. It's something I'd like to do, but it's just, yeah, I'm just not convinced that, you know, we're having enough trouble getting eight LOL teams down at the moment. So it's, yeah, it's just more whether the community is actually capable of getting there. Yeah, and, you know, fingers crossed, um, you know, we can, you know, like like you said, you know, I'm sure Immunity would be able to send a team, you know, we certainly would send a team, Avant, hopefully, you would hope they would, um, but uh, the other Orcs out there, there's not probably enough supporting Battlefield at this stage, and, you know, so, so you probably think that a smaller format might work a bit better, possibly, but, you know, like you said, down the track, you, you never know, I guess. Yeah, well, a smaller format, 5v5 makes it a lot easier. But the thing is, it has to be something the community wants to play. Um, and like I said, going back to when I mentioned Zinto saying he's going to turn it into a sport, like I know for a fact that um, EA has something in the works. I dare say it's probably going to be targeted at Diffuse. Um, and in the end, it's going to get to the point where uh, if they throw enough money at it, people will come. So, you know, it may end up being dictated by EA what, you know, what flies when it comes to um, live events. Awesome. Well, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. And uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, next year we can get some sort of land event with CG going because that, that's, you know, I think that's pretty much uh, all the... All the all the guys who've been playing Battlefield since since uh, 42 and V and 2 and 2142 have just been dreaming of something like that um, happening just at least once. You know, I know I have. It's long overdue for sure. Yeah, and that's it. You know, I've been playing it for a long time since BF2 and, you know, I've nothing, wanted nothing more than to, to jump into a land environment with the team and, and give it a crack. So fingers crossed for that. And um, look, we know that Talma is going to give everything he can and Cybergun is going to provide all the resources we can. So... Massive, massive thanks to CyberGamer and, and hopefully we can see some things in the future. But um, one final question. Mm -hmm. What are the next set of tags we're going to see on Talnoy? We're going to get Avant Talnoy, Immunity Talnoy maybe? Maybe Crux Talnoy? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I've got my Counter-Strike team. Um, I've got my work to do with CyberGamer. I don't have enough time to practice. And it's just my days as a player even in an open team are pretty much over. I just don't have the time for it. I'll be fair, uh, fair pub brand slash Telnoy. Sweet pub brand slash Telnoy. Let's uh, let's chuck the tags in and we'll, we'll make it a big, we'll make it a thing. But uh, no, look, thanks a lot, mate, for um, for jumping in. So, look, um, I'll open it up to everybody now. We've got a whole bunch of uh, very experienced Battlefield gamers in here, and you know we've also got um, our old school guys, Viper and, and Rock, Doctor Steve, and all the teams and that here. So. Look, I'll just open it up here. You know, of all your respective teams in here, guys, if a LAN event were to be held in Australia or, or New Zealand for that matter, I'd probably let's keep it to Australia for the moment because there's not too many Kiwis in here. But, you know, which of your teams do you reckon you'd be able to attend? You know, Butter, do you reckon Avant would be able to get five guys down to, a, to an event? Uh, yes, five we'd do. But, I mean, the, the way the team's being run, we do have some inf players. We're not you know, keen to play five. I understand the logistics of it, but it's not what we want to be doing. We'd, we'd like to make it and it'd be fun, but I hope that's not where it ends up, to be honest. You're thinking about this the wrong way. Like, we, already know, we already know what teams can go and what teams can't. Um, and like Richard said, the, the issue isn't with the number of teams coming, although it is an issue. It is with the hardware and the number of days it's going to take and the return on investment that the comps are going to get out of it. So you're not going to see 8v8 land happening ever 
I just don't um, reckon it's over, yeah, it but I don't there. reckon it's ever going to take off because they market the game one way, they advertise it one way with these huge dynamic environments, the vehicles and stuff, and then you push a five v five comp format. It's just it's not sustainable with the sales model they're pushing on one side, if you ask me. And maybe that means we can't do land and we have to look at prizes for online comps and stuff like that until it grows huge. But gaming's such a multi billion dollar industry, as if it's not going to keep growing. You know what I mean? The opportunity's got to come. Why can't it be now? Why can't we start pushing for it? Yeah, but the truth is small format will bring more teams to the competition um, if we embrace it, mainly because um, not all of these good teams can make, uh, can just have one team, you know, we're going to have to split into IM two teams and X5 will have two or three teams because of the number of players they have. Yeah, so you're going to see that kind of situation. Because BF3 went gangbusters, man. Everybody who used to play walked away. It's now that the game's expanding again that we're seeing some of the old teams come back. The guys who were the energy in the comp scene. I'm not saying we couldn't develop new stuff as well. I'm just saying that we love this game for, for what Battlefield is, you know what I mean? And yeah, but... with any human endeavour, when you get kids screwing around, when they start forming teams, those teams start playing another, you get leagues growing. The, the 8 oh. that league will keep reappearing. Here's the truth. Battlefield 3, you saw a lot of these guys come back. I'm going to open a can of worms here. A lot of these guys came back. A lot of these old school players came back. How many teams lasted to the end of Battlefield 3? And we're, we are guilty of this as well. I am melted. Um, OGA melted in the first season. Mind Freak lasted for about two weeks. So you're going to see a lot of these teams. The, the going to game be teams was that rubbish. That's why it happened. It wasn't because they didn't have numbers, man. There were over 100 teams signed up to the ladder before BF3 started, right? And they, they merely divided in half in like the first three weeks. And the reason is because the game was garbage and because it had no support. It was nothing to do with the energy in the community there. You just answered my question for me. It had no support. So if EA kicks in support for a smaller format, is everyone going to rotate over there? You just said just before that none of your team are keen to play a small format. Will they if be keen? If EA's dick was support? painted gold, would you suck it? You know, like why? Why? Just because they push it, it's not the way the game works. You know, how many characters are we why talking? We're here. That's, that's my first question. <laughs> but obviously, you know, obviously the you know um, having EA support. For a, for a particular game mode does help, you know, like if they are pushing, you know, if they if they make some big, you know, Asian tournament like they did for sort of the start of BF2 where it was like, you know, the tournament is 8v8 and this is what's happening, then around the world, obviously teams are going to probably try and conform to that format, I suppose. Well, obviously people are passionate about playing 8v8 and keeping their format alive, but I'm, I'm passionate about competitive gaming, so... You say, am I going to suck EA's dick? No, but of course, if there is an opportunity to make this game competitive and have it be a game that brings FPS back to life in Australia, because we all know that CS didn't last and it's dead. Richard is going to tell you that. I will do whatever it takes, whether it be migrating my team over or melting my team away from IM to make a new team and letting IM have another 5v5 team themselves. I'll do it. Ooh. Fair enough. I just reckon, even, I reckon even if EA gaming. backs it, I reckon even if EA backs it though, the the five v five comp will not take off as Battlefield of its own accord. If you know what I mean, it'll be it'll always be playing second fiddle to COD and CS. Of course. And stuff. No, 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 no. It won't play second fiddle to that game. It'll play second fiddle to eight v eight Battlefield that we all know and love, and we play it in Battlefield two, Battlefield three. Personally, I didn't, of course, but you know, but. In Australia, the situation is you've got League of Legends, um, you've got Call of Duty on console, and you've got fighting games. And fighting games are opportunities for solo players. League of Legends and COD on console um, are for teams. The problem is FPS is dead in the water here. CS is gone. Um, there's about three or four active teams, and the rest of them are just playing matchmaking. Um, we have no viable option for FPS here. So anything we can do to bring that to life or give that a chance is... Um, definitely worth a shot. I know it's like playing watered down Battlefield, and I know I can't convert you over because you're passionate about 8v8, but I'm just trying to tell everyone that's watching, there's 100 people here, to try to give it a chance um, and see what happens. No, no, I mean, like I said, we if there are lands and stuff, we will be attending, but everybody here would look to if it's, if it's available, you know what I mean? It's just, it, I find it disappointing that 
I don't know, hopefully EA, EA are actually leading into the franchise, you know, starting at 5v5 or something like that. It would be nice to see them grow something out of it that can encompass the larger formats as well. So I will support the 5v5 if that's what they're throwing money behind, but it's not, I don't see it as the ultimate aim of what we're trying to do here, that's all. I'm, I don't either. Um, and I, well, I like... definitely agree with you, like 5v5 is a watered down 8v8 and it's not that interesting, but... Um, I really just want to give it a shot and see how we go. I don't want there to be like a 5v5 comp announced and everyone just burns on it because it's 5v5. And we know that will happen. I mean, look what happened when Squad Rush came around at first. Everyone just hated on it. Um, and European modes where they run 5v5 Conquest, everyone's like, oh, what is this shitty mode? This isn't Battlefield. Let's give it a shot, guys. Come on. Like, what do we have to lose, really? Well, let's, let's open it up to, to a few other guys in general. I think Shan had something to say before. Yeah, just just kind of what I was gonna say is I think Battlefield's being kind of kind of kind of stupid here and squandering what they have going for themselves, which is you know a format that's not really out there. CS for fives is far more entertaining, far more better than BF is ever gonna be for fives, and COD's got more fans for fives than BF is ever gonna have. So the way I see it is why not push what is our gem, which is our vehicles, our air you know, boats, etc. Why not push that format and, you know, be be not competing with other games that already have, you know, set for years and years a 5v5 format that is by far far more entertaining than Battlefield can ever be at 5v5. And if we all convert to what DICE wants us to do, which is no doubt it's going to be a shit 5v5 format, that's, that's not going to help Battlefield. If anything, that's going to take Battlefield and put it in the same category as games that are already going to smash it day in and day out. You haven't played their 5v5 mode, so I don't know how you can critique it. And you're yeah, acting as if the Call of Duty 5v5 mode came out of nowhere. I mean... It's like cutting, it but actually... that's, like, that's like saying he hasn't cut his legs off yet. He doesn't know if he won't be able to what run is... without them. How did the Call of Duty competitive community start? Was their primary game mode 5v5? Fuck no. They played 64, 32 player pub. Yeah. And it just it... evolved into that over time. Um, so you can also Josh, see, Josh, Josh. Um, oh, sorry, Karen. Battlefield 4, um, you can see just by playing the game. And I think there's an indicator there, and that's just how good infantry is. Josh, you played Counter-Strike um, for a long time. Do you really feel that the infantry, the weapons, the way infantry plays in Battlefield would translate into a workable 5v5 game to start with? Will people just go, yeah. well, it's horrible trying to play this? Nope. That's why I'm still here. And I know a lot of people used to say when I started playing Battlefield, he's not going to last because he's from CS, but I'm still here. That's and it's, it's because I love the infantry play. And it's far more punishing than CS, in my opinion, because if you make one mistake and your squad wipes, it's over. Um, whereas CS, I mean, you've got plenty of rounds to, to do what you will. It's not just like you get capped out and, and it's GG. There's a lot of strategic depth in this game, and that's what people need to understand in, inf in infantry formats even. I mean, I, I can absolutely appreciate your passion for it, but you're saying that I don't know what game mode they're pushing, whereas they've already said they're pushing the domination game mode, which what the beta was, and it was absolutely trash. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, yeah. um, no, it's terrible. You can't judge it off the beta. You're playing yeah, I mean, I, I, like the, I like the format. Hand. I like the format, but, um, you know, we all joined Battlefield for the complexity of strats and vehicles and mixing with infantry and I get my death dogs going with competitive but there is no real competitive level in our end of the world and no one's going to make money or a living out of it unless you're like the top team in Australia and get to travel overseas so you know I, I sort of see it as that you know we all joined it because of battlefield as vehicles and infantry and that's what we like um, and if you want to you know be competitive you can be competitive but you're never really going to make anything out of it in our end of the woods I guess the argument is that we're, like, we're trying somewhere. to make we're trying to make it into a competitive. We're trying to make it into something that is competitive and, and can pick up a lot quicker. Because you know you're right. You know, down our end of the world, no, yeah, it's, it's not massive. But we're trying to we're trying to make it bigger. And what's the best way of doing that? Yeah, I mean, it's... and 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 Battlefield goes through fits and spurts. Like I lived in the UK for two years during Battlefield Two. I wrote all the strats for OGA, but I wasn't actually for most of OGA's time here and I played an ESL and 5v5 comps I played for IG um, in in the UK when I was younger and could actually play decently but um, 
but even then they you know they pushed 8v8 hugely always at the start all the, all the clan based comps are always at 8v8 always have been it always goes to 5v5 when the interest dies down and then um you know ESL pick up 5v5 because the german players like to play it a lot but it was always 8v8 and then i played 2142 and 2142 was the same it went 8v8 then went to 5v5 and then it died away just because you know people moved on but it worked it online. Seems, it seems like tested online in a, you know, in an extended format. Yeah, but the the waters have been tested at DreamHack, and the ESL's tested five v five. You know what I mean? So you're gonna see it going in that direction, regardless of you know, oh, yeah, you guys I, like playing. It's gonna happen. Yeah, I, I don't dis disagree. That's you know, dice are gonna push it that way because that's what they yeah. want. want but to really, do, but... I'm I'm all for eight v eight. We've recruited a tanker and you know, ng chopper and everything. We've got a decent air crew behind us. I'm all for playing eight v eight, but it's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I feel sorry for in Australia because you guys struggle to get people to lands in New Zealand. You know, we do get a decent amount of teams, and and they are well known teams. Like you know, back in the day, it was like Silla, NN, ourselves, um, you know, Infinity. We'd get like at least six to seven decent teams and twelve yeah. eights teams. So it still was a good competition at the, at lands. Comes down to population spread, unfortunately, it's too big, yeah. and people can't make it that far, really. And we've got a very, very, very young community. Um, which we can really attest to with the later players in Battlefield 3, you can kind of see how young they are but, and it makes it a little bit more difficult for us. But people shouldn't knock our our skill set down here in Australasia because we're so lucky that we condense it, that we can have decent comps. And you would have seen in the clan based comp, some of the teams would have been rubbish because in Europe and that, they struggle to actually get to filter all the decent players into good teams. But here we have a real good sort of framework to develop high skills. Yep. It does mean it's very difficult to join from the bottom, though, as a team, certainly, because those at the top, of, it's very difficult to knock people off the, you know, off the top rungs. But we've seen teams like Crux form and, and, and become, you know, quite a force in BF3. You know, they, they, didn't, they, they, didn't exception, win, not, they didn't the win rule, any... Though. No, but, you know, they're a good example of, of the fact that, that a team that does put the time in, does put the effort in, cracks their asses off and wants to give it a red-hot go, can. Because they certainly did. They, they didn't win any any comps in Australia, as far as I don't think, as far as I know. Sonic might correct me later and bash me over the head. Yeah. But, but, you know, <laughs> but, I mean, they did a very good job and, and, and came close to topping, you know, topping a few of the top teams that, on a few occasions, you know. So it can happen to those that, that choose to. Oh, no, I, I want it to. I just feel like... Mon, Mon Pepe's right about, you know, we have a really strong comp scene down here. We probably need to develop funnels and stuff to pull players in but that's something ea can help with i mean like cs has the esports button on the front page when you go into csgo battle log is, has such potential there and it's just been mishandled they want to create a facebook tool fair enough but it could be so much more than that it could be used better and that's something dice there they've got some overhaul coming for battle log they've announced um and they won't say what it is when i when i wrote that essay on the on the mordor forums one of the devs was responding and just saying that um, there's shit coming. It's not everything we've asked for, but it's going to help push the comp stuff along. So hopefully that, you know, we'll be able to take advantage of that as well in some fashion. Yeah, I def definitely hope so. Look, we'd, uh, we'd love to be able to chat about this all night, but unless uh, we've talked about a few more things, we're going to be going until midnight. But um, look, uh, just a general question for everybody, change a bit of a topic. Um, I think most people here, if not everybody, uh, played a bit of the BF4 beta. Um, what were your impressions overall of the actual change in dynamic of the game from BF3? Better. Yeah, Slower. I definitely like it more. Slower. So I'll just on my that team with was elevators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just who, I'm not sure who said slower there, but um, you know that was definitely my impression. You know, I I felt I felt like BC2 all of a sudden. I felt like I was going. I don't know why. It was, BC2 was a bit more sluggish movement, but um, you know, I didn't think it was such a bad thing. I didn't love it. I'd love the ability of BF2, but it's it's definitely uh, an interesting change. I liked it. I found that the netcode was so awful in BF3 that while you, in theory, you could move quicker, you're always just falling over things, you know, failing to hurdle something. Um, that, that weird jerky movement system it was just garbage, I thought. So they might have slowed it down slightly, but it actually worked. You could control it and move quickly. You played quite a bit of it, Waffles, didn't you? Well, what did what did you think of it? Um, yeah, I liked the move. I didn't find it that slow because I play on a ridiculous FOV of like one twenty, so it's like fishbowl. I just <laughs> liked it that way. I don't know why, but um, 
I just the f- biggest thing I liked was the RDSing Zoom. Like it's not as zoomed in anymore. It's almost, I think it was like barely any zoom on the ADS at all, which to me was just great because that whole sensitivity change from ADS to hit fire just always screwed me up, and I didn't never liked it. It was even since COD, so that part was the best for me. Oh, I think it's hard to tell now, but a lot of the of us have seen some of the pictures of the maps. In a Battlefield 3, you were sort of channeled down three sort of routes, but a lot of the maps seem approach routes to flags are more open. So I think, well, just looking at the maps, so rats and the way we play in scrims will will be slightly different. And may even, we haven't made a decision on Commander, but that's where sort of that might come in because otherwise you won't know, you know, there's just so much unknown where people can come from. Yeah, that, um, that prison map, which is pretty much going to be the metro of BF4, looks like it's got like at least five different routes for every single flag, yeah. which is such an improvement. Yeah, the, the maps metro. look pretty good. They look pretty good. Just yeah, from well, the let's, overview. Let's, let's get on to that. You know, everybody's um, seen the, the pre- well, most people have seen the previews of the maps now. What, what do you guys think of the maps overall compared to BF3? I'm yet to see a single one that I think that looks terrible. Like, you know, like there's a couple in BF3 just looked at me like, what is this? Whereas <clears> with BF4 so far, I haven't. I haven't looked at them all very, very closely yet, but I haven't seen one yet that I hate already. They're a, lo- question lock a lot less. I can, sh- you know, who can shoot the best down a corridor? They look, you yeah, know, exactly. more open and a bit more dynamic. Yeah, it definitely looks like you can move around a lot more, create a bit more of a dynamic play. Yeah, those all the rooftops in the the flood zone one and stuff. It just looks like there's more places to go, you know, more buildings to climb and actually move between instead of just isolated little things like they were on the on the Carcan remakes and stuff where you couldn't go anywhere. And you can catch elevators. Yeah, no, they all the maps certainly, you know, it looks better. I remember looking at BF three and thinking it looked looked good, but you know, we learn as we go along and I'm assuming dice are learning as well. So looks looks good from this end. The silence is so awkward, I'm gonna open a can of work. <laughs> is the lux okay? I think the lux is uh is a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For... Ah, no. There we go. There he goes. Um, so, mate. floor. Floor question for you and everyone else that has a large team. I think that's all of us. Um, let's say you've got 14, 15 players on a roster. You field a team of eight at the start of Battlefield. Um, everyone's great guns. You've got players from Battlefield 3 that you think are really great and you think they're going to be awesome in Battlefield 4. But it turns out that a guy or a couple of guys in your bench happen to be better than guys in your core lineup. What do you do? You got to, unfortunately, it's about the team at the end of the mm. day. And that's, you recruit for that and you make people understand that when you recruit them. So it's based on fielding the strongest lineup, whoever that happens to be. Nobody is going to be excluded from the community in Avant and never will be. But, you know, that's the way it happens. I think... truth, but what I'm trying to say is like in Battlefield 3, you've got pre-made relationships with these guys from playing comp with them, etc. Um, can you pull the plug on someone, really? To yeah, start easily, yeah. butter? Yeah. I mean, I pull a plug on myself all the time and put people in. I did <laughs> that match when um, when Vlot stole the chopper from Immunity and we we took Immunity to that that Damavan round in the ten v ten. You know what I mean? I pulled myself and let him in because I thought he was better for the job. I think I think just just uh, we've an X five because we've got a pretty big lineup. We've touched on it a little bit, and thankfully we do have spectator mode now, and we will actually. You know, be able to see who's performing and who's not compared to Battlefield 3 where it's, you can be the top fragger but all you're doing is res camping. It doesn't really account That's for it. much. You can, you can be critical of everyone. That's um, one thing yeah. that BF4 is going to bring to the table. So, so, so like like I've said for myself or X5, if I'm not performing, I'm, I'm more than happy to step down. At the end of the day, you have to play your best team. And relationships so shouldn't be broken if you're not good enough to get played. Then someone's just being a suck. Yeah, that's it, man. It comes down to just, just being, you know, the bigger man saying, yeah, look, I'm not playing well this week. Just take it away is like, you know, some sort of, you know, as an improvement you got to work on for the week. And then probably come back next week bigger and better, you know. Just I'm going to do it. Crack and Sonic. What do you guys think? <laughs> I've heard enough out of the XL5 players. <laughs> <laughs> you have the same opinion like you've been indoctrinated or something. Jesus. <laughs> no, we're all the same terms, man. I didn't say a thing, man. I'd like um, to hear Sonic, because you guys have yeah. so many games together. So what, what do you yeah. think? Um, 
I would say it would be hard, but as everyone else has said, uh, at, at the end of the day, it comes down to how well the team will eventually perform. And I mean, sometimes you have to sacrifice uh, that for that. <laughs> so, so why um, is Barry still playing for you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's awkward like, questions. One. Yep, no, he does his he does his job, and he um he definitely does as he's asked. I mean, he um he always does what he needs to do, and he does it correctly, which is uh repairing those tanks. He's good at it, so why would, uh, why would we replace him? Oh, fair enough. Hey, what, what do you reckon, Crack? I mean, your team's obviously a bit different with the, the fours and, and the or five, sorry, and the eights. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, um, look, at, yeah, our team lineup is a lot different to what we had in Battlefield 3, and it's we're going to have some ups and downs and to start with. You know, we're just going to hopefully just get the prac in and get everybody trained up again. But um, it just comes down to teamwork, you know, and who, who listens, really. Like, you can put your best person forward and they might not listen to you and just run off and do their own thing. And what good's that for the team if they're not going to help and do their own shit, you know? So um, I've still got... So we've still got a whole new lineup and just going to have to play it out and see who does what. And hopefully... It turns out all right, but yeah, if if somebody like our main infantry player, if he's playing bad during the week and somebody else playing better and more teamwork, then yeah, obviously I'm going to put them in over the other guy. And that's just it, you know. We're playing, we're trying to make this as highly competitive as possible, and you know, in all in all forms of sport, you know, for me, uh, being a Melbourne, 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 and I, I watch the AFL, but you know, they they always play their best team, you know, and. If if somebody's performing well, at some point, you know, some rookie is performing well, then he he gets more game time. And I, I think we're all mature now. You know, it's we're not. Um, I, don't know, I was chatting with with Sad Act a few days ago. You know, a lot of the stuff that we used to do back in the day, you know, we just wouldn't get away with these days. You know, everyone was a lot more trolly. It was a lot more immature. It was, but now where it's different. You know, everyone, a lot of the teams are in organisations trying to make a cool name for themselves. We're, we're trying to promote this the sport. You know, um, get sponsors on board to support us, so we can go to land events and all that sort of stuff. So, I, I think being more mature now, it, it comes down to it. You know, it, it definitely does. You know, I was saying to to Big Arms as well when we were playing BF3 recently against the Immunity that I, I performed really, really badly in the Caspian match, and I wasn't sh- quite sure what it was, and that if we, if we got to that situation again, I might sit myself out and watch a few rounds and and try and figure out what I was doing wrong. So, I, it does come down to that maturity and. I think a lot of the teams now, um, having a lot more maturity, uh, it, it will go down a lot, a lot more easy compared to when you were 11 years old and you just wanted to play. Yeah. And I'd say, I'd say pretty much every team here would, you know, would be in that position. I know there's a few younger players around, like you got, you know, Avant. We've got a few of the younger guys in there. I think. How many butters? Oh, certainly Valzo. I think he'd be the youngest by a couple of years. He's yeah. he's definitely still underage, but his dad used to play for Tog Phoenix, actually. Yeah, you know it's funny. You know we all back in the day of OzBF, you know in in, in uh, BF two and that, um, you know we also troll the forums and act like dickheads and all the older you know members of the community thought we were fuckwits, and now it's I feel old now. <laughs> Fels has actually got a really level head on him for someone so young. He just he doesn't troll, never acts up. You know, he's really dedicated and very good at what he does. So he's a delight to work with, i got to say. So the young generation aren't all bad, I guess. Sorry, having a few issues on my phone. No, no, definitely not. And, that, and that's good. And it's really good. And I hope, that, I hope that every team pushes that. I hope every team takes it, you know, plays properly, responsibly, teaches the young, younger guys, you know, this is, how, this is how it works, you know. And, you know, hopefully it, it's, everything's improving. I, I feel like it is. I definitely feel like it is. So, look, um, for the sake of not going through to midnight, we'll uh, wrap that up there. It's been really great chatting with you guys. And, and look, the last thing we've got for the show is um, uh, Chris XBL uh, is um, from M-Wave and organised uh, two massive competitions for BF3. And he's also announced he's going to basically support Battlefield 4 even more um, with a $5,000 competition in, in conjunction with Cyber Gamer. And so... Uh, he wasn't available tonight, but um, during the week we managed to catch up with him for for an interview, and uh, we've got the recording of it. So Shannon was able to catch up with him um, during the week and um, and have a chat about uh, him, what he does for M Wave, just a little bit about his history and 
you know, how we got into gaming and also some details on the on the five thousand dollar competition. So I think you you've got that queued up there, Shane. Yeah, hopefully it works. If it doesn't, just message me. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. I'm just gonna be more team speak. more technical. More technical issues, but uh, Chris, no. Chris works so unbelievably hard, man. It's um, it's actually ridiculous. Like I've I've worked with him through my job, and the amount of time he puts into gaming, even though it's not his official position or anything like that, um, is really phenomenal. So just like always, buy stuff from M Wave guys, give him some support. Seriously, help him out. Yeah, he's he's an amazing guy, and he's teamed up with Talnoy to to make it even easier and better for us on CyberGamer, and he's just really committed to it. So, listen in; it's um it's a great interview. Um, a lot of good questions. So, um, yeah, enjoy. Sound muted. Good evening, gamers, and welcome to our first interview here on X Five Live. My name is Shannon. We are lucky enough to be joined by Chris XPL. Chris is the marketing manager for M Wave Online. He has a passion for competitive esports in Australia and has helped support the battlefield scene over the last year by investing in two major competitions in BF3, a 4v4 competition with a $1,750 prize pool and an 8v8 competition with a $2,000 prize pool. With the release of Battlefield 4, Chris has returned with no delay and announced his biggest competition yet, a $5,000 prize pool. I took the chance to catch up with Chris and talk about all things esports. Chris, thanks for taking the time to chat with us. How you going, man? Hey, mate. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, doing quite well today. How are you, man? I'm um, good, good. Sun's out. Loving it. Love it. Yeah, Sydney today is perfect. Sweet. Um, now, you've been supporting an Australian competitive battlefield over the last year now, which a whole community is absolutely grateful for, but we feel like we hardly know you, man. So how about you just go ahead and just, just tell us a bit about yourself? Well, my job in M-Wave is basically um, more like a well, I've a PM role to manage to manage all the categories, um, and also additional is that to look after you know like the esport because we see that there's a lot of potential not only to, for us but you know moving forward as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. That's that's awesome. So, um, where did where did you sort of get into PCs and gaming and etc? Were you were you a gamer first, or did you just get interested in more like the hardware side of things? What what kind of got you into M Wave? Uh, I think when I was thirteen, my uncle bought uh, bought our first uh, system. I think that's what kind of got me excited. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was very into. I just I don't know there's something about the hardware that I was really interested in and what a PC could do for you know everyday computing. So I just got into it then. Come when I was 16, CS 1.6 landed on my doorstep. Uh, and, yes. Yeah. <laughs> then I started, you know, those the four, four to eight hour weekends just hammering 1.6 away. And, you know, my neighbor was into gaming as well. It just, you know, it's just something to talk about, you know, have fun with. It's more of a social thing for me rather than a competitive. Yeah, nice. Definitely. Yep. So, um, what kind of made you interested in competitive? Um, Battlefield scene. Are you a true um, Battlefield gamer at heart, or is it just mainly FPS, or, or are you interested in kind of you know all games across the board? Uh, I love. Well, my heart is with FPS. I started from with Counter Strike, and you know stayed with it all the way into I finished school. Then you just don't have much time after school when you you know full time uh, job and part time TAFE. So you just didn't have time for you know all the games, but. My heart is with Counter Strike. I jumped onto Battlefield Two, so Bad Company Two. Yep. It was so hard for me. Like I don't know, it was so hard for me to get a kill. But I think once I spent a few hours on it, then I kind of got used to it. Battlefield Three came on, jumped onto that, loved it, absolutely loved it. Hence why I'm supporting the community. So. Me hey, man. Now just just moving on. What are you kind of hoping to see from the Battlefield scene in in Australia? You're sponsoring quite a bit of money and we'd love to see your, you know, your support continue. So what can like the community do to make sure that these events are awesome and that they just, you know, they, they keep happening and we keep getting more sponsorship. Oh, mate, look, Battlefield 3, the last two tournaments that I did had a humongous uh, turnout. That's all we just need is a, a good turnout, lots of, you know, respect, um, helping each other out. And just generally giving us feedback to improve for the next season. That's you know that's one of the keys that we look for. 
the com Battlefield community is very, very supportive and to me very respectful, especially towards me. And I think in general, it's very good. Awesome, man. All right, let's talk about the competition. When are you planning on starting it? Is it going to be before Christmas or after Christmas? Well, mate, definitely before Christmas. We're going to have the rule sets down. We're going to have the team formats in, what maps we're going to play, because we're going to have a better understanding of the game. Yeah. But the tournament won't go live until around mid-January because I'm going on holidays. I'm sure everyone is looking forward to a good break after a long year. And we're going to start around then and hopefully run for about two to three months after that. Nice. Now, a lot of the Australian community is very concerned about DICE's announcement that they'll be supporting esports, but only through their 5v5 domination mode. And due to it not feeling like a competitive mode, due to random spawns, no vehicles, it doesn't really feel like Battlefield. Are you kind of leaning towards Australia's main competitive format, as in the bigger formats, the 8v8s, maybe with a commander, all of the vehicles, etc.? Or are you looking to align your tournaments with DICE and stick to the 5v5 infantry only mode? Well, mate, I say 5v5, I just say that it's Counter Strike, Call of Duty kind of style, and I'm trying to. I think for the first one, I would love it to be 8v8 or 10v10. Um, you're going to get commitment from players at, in the beginning, so it's not going to be that hard to form teams of 8v8 or 10v10. I'd love to see 8v8. That's what Battlefield's about. You know, yep. a huge group, getting in the planes, the tanks, and just having a good time. But I think the 5v5 maybe later on in the seasons or the next season or the season after that, as, you know, the the game starts to wear down and it's harder to find commitment from players. Five v five is definitely an option, but the first one, I'm leaning for A V A or ten v ten for sure. Nice man, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of appreciation from you know the true Battlefield fans because that's that is what Battlefield's about. Um, now something else you said, which which I was very impressed with, is that you're going to be divvying up the money between uh, having like a pro league and an amateur and open league. What sort of split are you going for? Because I'm sure, you know, this is going to bring more amateur teams to the game as well as pushing, you know, kind of the amateur or casual gamers might push them up, you know, and to take it a bit more seriously and just, it'll just spark a lot more interest. Yeah, well, I had to divide it because if I made it open registration, like last time, the pro teams are going to take it out hands down. So this time around, I split, I split it over. Um, definitely going to, the professional league is going to have more of the prize ratio, maybe 70%. I'm not entirely sure. It's not in concrete yet. But yep. it's just going to it's just going to give everyone a chance this time around. So let the pros play together because they already have the skill set from Battlefield 3 or Bad Company 2. Everyone who's new to the game or just started out at Battlefield 3, it gives them a chance, you know, just to improve team communication, team uh, like team layouts, etc. How, just how to play the game properly in a in a um, in a scrim scenario rather than just you know in public. Yep, that's that's good. Seems seems reasonable. Now, during the tournament, is is this tournament just going to be kind of like the the cash prize, or you, or are you looking at giving away any gear during the tournament? You know, for best play or anything, or or, or you're just leaving it open at the moment. Uh yeah. Well, right now it's um. I know definitely it's cash in hand, that's for sure, for the winners of the tournament. Yep. And then we're going to have like an exhibition match between the first place of the pro and first place of open and probably have something there for them as well. Uh, just to see like, you know, how their skill levels, you know, um, differentiate from themselves. In regards to the prize pool, first, second, third, if it's AV or 10v10, um, I'd like to keep it one or two. Uh, maybe three could be an option. But yeah, that's something that I need to consider. Uh, in regards to giveaways, that can always happen at any time. I can get giveaways to the best player, best admin support. You know, that's very easy for me. So there's no problem there. Nice, man. And final question, something that a lot of teams are looking forward to is will you be participating in this tournament? I'd love to put my hand up, but unfortunately I won't be able to. Uh, just, you know, uh, schedule commitments, etc. However, I'm going to be behind the scenes, so if anyone has any feedback or requests, feel free to PM me. I always read every single PM or email that's sent to me. Nice, man. Well, that's all from us. 
thanks a lot for joining us in the studio, Chris. No, thanks for having me. Uh, I wish everyone the best of luck. Uh, good luck with X5 in your stream. You're doing a great job supporting the community. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. No problems at all. Uh, you know, once again, thank you. Thanks to the community and look forward to seeing you guys on the battlefield. Sweet, man. Catch you up. Now, as a community, what can you guys do to make sure that awesome shit like this keeps happening? Please head over to mwave.com.au for all of your electronic needs and programming needs. They have everything that you can think of. Support Mwave and they'll keep supporting us as a gaming community so that you can keep playing the games you love and enjoy the competition. The Mwave $5,000 competition gets away start of next year, probably about mid-January, and you can catch all of the action here live and exclusive on X5 Live on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash X5 Live. We're also going to have our YouTube channel up showing highlights and interviews, youtube.com forward slash team XL5. Other than that, back to you, Deluxe, in the studio. Sound resume. Yeah, and crack. Yo, we're back. So, that's, uh, that's Chris XPL. So, no, well done, Shan. That was, that was a really good interview. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's such a top bloke, and uh, it was a shame he couldn't be here tonight. But um, I'm really looking forward to, to everything he's going to bring to the to the battlefield community in the future so it's uh it's going to be great but um look we're going to wrap things up tonight guys it's um it's gone been delayed and gone long enough and i do really again apologize completely for that it's um it was out of my hands but um you know i had it planned down to a t and at the last minute we had to shift it all over to shannon so big thank you to you shannon for for getting that all sorted at the last minute that was um it went it went all right mate it went all right <laughs> <laughs> But um, no, look, thanks, um, thanks all the guests for joining us tonight. Um, from all from all the teams, said Waffles and Crack Butter, Death Dog, uh, Mon Pippi and Sonic and Floor. So thanks, thanks for joining us and, and giving us a chat about the teams. And we look forward to to seeing you on the battlefield. Um, thanks to Talnoy for being available to have a chat about um, about Cyber Gamer and, and what they're prepared to be putting in in the future because it, it it sounds very exciting to me and um the, the, just the possibility of them hosting a LAN event is um you know is, is worth all of our attention so uh, thanks also to all our graphics guys and video guys at, at x5 you know Medi, meadow spanky cryptic and gary um put this together in the you know for hours and hours and hours in the last couple of days and um it'll be a lot more organized in the future i, I promise and uh, <laughs> thanks to all the um the x5 guys uh, the co-casters shannon dr steve viper and cookie and meadow everybody who's um sticking around and saying hello um thanks to to chris a massive thanks to chris um for the interview um he's really excited we're really excited and um, we're really looking forward to getting stuck into the the 5k competition it's a uh, it's a lot of money and um also uh thanks to to our sponsors nvidia cool master and, and cm storm for supporting us through this this whole endeavor uh, we look really really forward to their support for the um, battlefield community because they do love battlefield as well and um we really look forward to giving their stuff away to people, so that should be good. But uh, no, that, that's that's all from us, guys. You can keep up to date with everything that's going on with X5 Live via our um, team website at teamxl5.org, on Facebook at facebook.com slash teamxl5, Twitch um, at twitch.tv slash x5 live, and on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash teamxl5. We're going to upload all the VODs of all the shows and shoutcasts onto YouTube, so you can follow those there if you want to download your matches after all that. Um, but yeah, basically the next time you hear from us is um, is when we're shoutcasting in BF4. So uh, look, make sure you follow us uh, and find out when the first cast is because that is going to happen. It's going to be a lot more organised and a little bit more professional. And um, you look, we're, I've said it so many times tonight, but we're just super excited to um, to be able to do it. So so let's uh, let's get it all going. But um, until next time, uh, I haven't really thought up of a closer closing yet. I have to convert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to think of a quote. Let's, let's just uh, let's just go with Anchorman for tonight. Let's let's say uh, I'm Deluxe and you stay classy, Battlefield community. <laughs>